Hey guys, welcome back to AZ Trimester. So, um, out of sheer boredom, I'm gonna jack up the uh, Fat Bob and I think I'm gonna take off the rear shock. Um, you know I had mentioned previously I was a bit apprehensive about getting into performance in the way of, you know, a cam, uh, you know, bumping up the displacement, this and that. Um, but, uh, and I had mentioned as well as part of that, that uh, I thought, you know, getting into the suspension and the braking system would be something I'd be interested in. And that coupled with, again, just sheer boredom, um, <laughs> just found something to do. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take off the rear shock and uh, maybe even disassemble it. And I'll tell you guys kind of where my head's at uh, as we get into it. First things first, let's get this KZ frame uh, off of this jack because that's what we're going to use to uh, elevate the rear of the bike or at least enough to where when the shock is out, the bike doesn't come crashing down. So, Okay, so you slide the jack under the uh, rear of the bike as, as far rearward as you can um, where you're still utilizing a lot of the frame. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this. Usually I do it with uh, my hands switched up from what I'm actually going to do it as, but I just want you guys to be able to see. All right. Test the rear wheel. Rear wheel still down. All right, almost there. All right, rear wheel's off. So the way you do this, I mean, if you're going to service the bike, you know, if you're not messing with the suspension, you can elevate as much as you need, but. If you're gonna do the rear shock, anything with it, you basically want the wheel touching, but not really any pressure on it. So that way the shock is, um, as far as where its mounting points are, doesn't have any pressure on it. It can be pulled out easily once you've uh, unbolted it. So, uh, But on that note, this jack has been extremely useful over the years. I first picked it up right after I I would say attempted to, but I actually succeeded, but it wasn't, uh, it didn't go too smoothly. Uh, basically, my Sportster 72, I swapped in some uh, slightly shorter shocks than factory, and I didn't have this jack, and so I did one side at a time, and then I had to muscle the bike up in order to line, it, line the shock up with its mounting point, and uh, it's really not a safe way to do it, um, nor is it an efficient way to do it so I picked that thing up shortly after and I've used it on every bike since my slim my XS 500 this uh, fat Bob used it on the uh, KZ a number of times so um, I would recommend picking one up and soon and the reason is that since I bought it and I only spent maybe 40 50 bucks on it it has gotten more and more expensive um, being that I work at Dean Speed and we sell products like rear sliders and license plate brackets that mount to the shock bolt, either upper or lower. You know, folks ask, how hard is it to do this, or, or what do you recommend, and etc. And, um, you know, it's always my recommendation of this jack. And as I provide the link for it, whether it's to Amazon or eBay or whatever the case is, um, I've noticed them getting more expensive uh, over, over time. And then especially in the last six months, um, I've noticed that they've shot up a lot. So jump on eBay, jump on Amazon, whatever, search for um, just a motorcycle jack and make sure if you're getting one to get one with those attachments that you saw I had used with the KZ frame because those are extremely helpful, especially if you're dealing with something that has frame rails or offset frame rails. Those are helpful. 
since this is a remote reservoir uh, rear shock, it's a little different than what I've been, what I've experienced before with the uh, soft tail slim as well as uh, Micah's street bob. So there's a torx nut, torx screw right back here. I'm gonna take that off so this is already loose and ready to go. The question that I have going forward is once the shock's ready to come out, how to get, because there's a line that connects, basically is what runs the fluid under pressure from this banjo to the shock. Oh gosh, where is it? Right over here, right up here. So yeah, it's gonna be a matter of how to get that reservoir out along with the shock. So let's do that and then take a look at uh, what's next. Okay, as I said, I pulled the uh, screw from the bracket here. This that was then loose. There's a clip here that holds these, as well as up here to this bracket, uh, because I went behind them, like so. Um, uh, to, to give credit where credit is due, uh, I watched a video, I think it was by Bung King, that talked about how to get this through there. And one of the methods, and the first method they mentioned was to take the adjuster off, but he said he stripped that screw super easy. And the other one was to move a bunch of this crap out of the way. The thing is, rather not do that, I've already moved more stuff than I want to. Um, and I have a lot of wires here because of my custom dynamics, tail light and blinkers. So I went with this because I knew that instead of using a Phillips screwdriver, that this method is much better. You put pressure from the palm of your hand, use this to ratchet it, and make sure you have the right shape bit. And yeah, I got it. There's a uh, washer on the base. This goes through. One thing to mention, as I wasn't aware, uh, I am now after having to uh, search and find the ball bearing. You see here there's a hole. There's a spring that's in there and a small ball bearing on top which lines up with either one of those. I don't know if you guys can see them, but there's a divot line all the way down on both. So that's your start and stop point for your adjuster. So it's a half turn, one, two, three, lines up with the ball bearing. But now that I've got this out of the way or off, I it would appear, if I kind of did a dry run, that I'll be able to fit that through once I get this bracket out of the way and get the shock out of there. So let's, uh, let's get started on that next step. So as you can see, we've got a 716 bolt here. This also looks like there's an al you can run an Allen head in there. Um, I've got a 716 wrench that I think I'm gonna run go with. And then um, <clears throat> the, the lowest profile bit I have for this Torx is a, a T25. Uh, it seems like the right fit. It could possibly be a T27, but um, I've got this low profile wrench. Uh, it's a cobalt wrench I got on Amazon. Um, for doing my uh, vented tranny top cover. So, man, that wasn't tight at all. <laughs> that took nothing. I feel like I don't even need that now. Jeez. All right, let's see if I can drop this bit and lose it somewhere. Okay. Well, it was a bit more of a success than I expected. So, and I'm, I'm gonna opt out of cutting this. Um, just because I've got a bunch of wires run through, I don't know, we'll see. But more often than not, I just leave that and then kind of just pull it out of the way. So. Yeah, the reason I'm not going for a socket uh, and a ratchet in here is it's not a lot of clearance. But if you have a ratcheting wrench, 716s, and you are in a good spot, here we go. Okay, that's out of the way. And then,
Good. Broke it loose. And I'm just making sure this doesn't go tumbling somewhere, but so far so good. Okay, so what I did is I, I loosened the bolts and whatnot, and then I ran that Torx uh, screw just in a couple few threads just to keep it there because I'm going to use the impact. I don't want it to rattle and fall. And I think when I go to pull the shock out, I could just lift this out of the way. <clears throat> but this is all speculative. What I need to get to now is this guy right here. Uh, I believe that's a quarter inch. Uh, I'm going to go grab a wrench. But, um, you know, it, it doesn't look so bad as far as like having to, if you use an Allen key or maybe if you have a socket. Um, clearance in there looks like it's pretty good. So let's grab a, a tool for that. So I tried the Allen key and the bolt was... I don't know, either had Loctite or was in there snug enough to where the Allen key didn't have enough uh, leverage. And of course I don't have the right socket size. So it's again a great example of having, you know, when you have the right tools, the job is that much easier. But I just grabbed this uh, quarter inch bit and quarter inch socket, which fit together very well. Then a uh, adapter on a socket. And I was able to, well, basically what I did is I dropped the bit in first and then the wrench in through here. And I had enough clearance to break it loose. You're not supposed to take this bolt all the way out. Um, yeah, because it's just a pinch bolt. So, um, what's next? Well, we're going to have to run a socket in here. Torx? Torx. So let's do that real quick. This next part is, you see where the pinch bolt is, and then I think you can see where it's a little bit of raw metal there. It's basically that guy. It's a T50, and I put it on a long extension. So I'm just going to... Hopefully this extension, I don't lose too much uh, torque here. Yeah, okay. And... Let's get you lined up. I think we are. Yeah. good and tight let's try something else so I ended up using a shorter um, extension and a breaker bar because um, that uh, that impact either it's not strong enough or maybe it was just the extension there's just too much torque being lost so uh, I broke it loose so now I should be able to use that longer extension with the uh, t50 and get that bolt out but uh, now that it's broken loose, I think what I'll do is break this front one loose too, just so everything's still in place, nothing goes swinging or flying around. Uh, hmm, what do you guys think? Three quarter? 17 millimeter? Well, we know it's not metric, so I'm thinking three quarter, but I could be wrong. Oh, what do you know? It's three quarter. Perfect. That one I'm hoping I can use the impact on. That'd be nice. I wonder if I have a taller one. 18, 21. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into it. Let's hope this is good. Make sure you're clear of everything. That's a no on that one as well. Okay, good to know. I don't see any pinch bolts on that, so. Nope, had to use a uh, breaker bar on this one too. So the torque on these guys is pretty significant, so that's a spec I think I'm going to check before I put this all back together to ensure that I get the numbers right. Right, I mean, it's a rear shock. It's supporting your, the rear of your motorcycle, right? So probably a good idea to have it all dialed in correctly. I pulled the bolt from the rear on the other side. 
I uh, took the screw out of here. Okay, that's fine. And uh, <clears throat> I decided that it would be best to pull this one last simply because the uh, I'd rather it hinge up here than clunk down. I mean, it may still, right? I mean, the day is young. it. Maybe not. Now that's it. Okay. So as you can see, the shock is loose. You can also see the banjo. Maybe you can. But from here, gosh, let's fiddle with this. Uh, it should come out. This might get in the way. So let's find that out real quick. So, assuming this is up and out of the way, and then this comes up, right, yeah, okay, just as I thought, so that's in the way, you have to elevate the motorcycle even more to get you room between the, you know what, maybe not, let's find out, okay, never mind, I was wrong, okay, so now I'm dealing with the reservoir, I'm sorry, uh, preload adjuster. So I have a zip tie I need to cut from my tra tranny top cover, vented tranny top cover routing. Uh, do that and then I'll have to work the uh, adjuster out and pull this simultaneously. So let me do that real quick. Loosened up the uh, vented top cover line. Got the shock here. And... Voila! There she is. That is heavy freaking duty. Okay. So here's uh, here's where we're at. We've got the rear shock and this compression tool. That's how we made a Dean Speed. A uh, tool that we first made and used when we put the Bung King extension kit on Micah's 2020 Street Bob. And then uh, we used it for the lowering link, the Codlin lowering uh, link for my 2019 Softail Slim. So, um, as I work on this, safety first. But the idea here is that, uh, you know, a rear shock, you know, if you're serious about getting the most out of uh, upgrading your rear suspension, you know, you're, you, you basically you're looking at a, a rear shock. And um, even the cheapest rear shock is a little more than I want to spend right now. Um, so I decided to go a different route, but in no way is this necessarily permanent. Uh, Codlin makes a one inch ex uh, extension or a one inch lift uh, that's it's pretty inexpensive. And I think doing that will change the geometry of the bike just a little. I want to see what it does. I want to see what it's like to ride it with that um, adjustment, with that change in the geometry. And uh, and then if it goes well, there's some drop, uh, drop in, excuse me, some drop in progressive springs uh, that are fairly inexpensive as well. Again, um, if this was a matter of seriousness, uh, I'd be setting aside some money and dropping hundreds of dollars. I think that with the combined front and rear suspension, I would be well in excess of a thousand dollars. I just don't want to spend that right now, but I'm bored and I want something to do. So, so here we are compressing the spring so I can get to the locking nut on the uh, eyelet there so I can take that off and then um, what I'll do uh, as well while I'm at it is uh, I'll get the spring coated a different color for funsies. So that's the plan. Uh, call this a part one. I'm going to drop this video and in the meantime wait on the spring to get coated and the extension piece to get uh, delivered by Codlin. So Thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, I'm going to finish this up and give it my uh, full attention because I don't want anything to go poorly. But, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys on uh, part two. And uh, in the meantime, just stay safe out there.